Yeah. You want to go first or me? Uh, sure, I'll go. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Backpacker Joe, and I'm here with my best friend, River. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm also known as Shatter Friend Gaming. Uh, nice to meet you all, finally. But like Joe said, I'm with him. Uh, he's one of my best friends as well, and we are here to pretty much weigh in on the whole entire Logan Paul controversy and just the YouTube um, conundrum in general. Yeah, just yeah. kind of like with an open discussion on like how is this affecting everybody, what should really happen, and like how things should kind of change, I think. And honestly, the most effect that's going to happen is not, sadly, not going to be Jake Paul or Logan Paul or I know PewDiePie had his controversies in the past, but it, bottom line is it's going to be affecting us smaller creator content uh, or content creators. It's just, I, I'm not optimistic literally for anything that they do. Yeah. And just because like I said to you, one at bad apple ruined the whole entire bunch. So, uh, pretty much I just, what I wanted to do with Joseph here is I kind of want to set a guideline of ethos or ethics that we content creators should be the one uphold, upholding and sadly YouTube has already weighed in that they are going to be doing something to kind of curb this which was what my worst case scenario was when I was telling Joseph here. Yeah the problem like it because they've been trying to curb problems for a while now with like their oh the ad bot I mean, yeah how are you recall it but the bot going through demonetizing certain key, uh, videos for certain keywords that, that was feeding that it. was hurting a lot of people like the lgbt community got hurt really bad from that just trying to do like informational videos yeah, well, uh one lbgt well one of those creators i kind of watched was talking about it too and i just find i just kind of got into that but it's also affecting like people who are bringing awareness to mental health i mean it's just it's affecting it affected more people that it was supposed to help than it should have. Yeah, so and I don't really know what repercussions can come from this now. Like, are they going to get more strict on this, which is going to hurt even more people? Or Are they going to bring more bots in to try and circulate more of this? <laughs> Who knows? Like, this is, this is honestly one of those tough conundrums that's just... And YouTube's, like, is stuck in a really hard spot because... They are. They, for, at least from information I know... They are probably still not making like money. They're yeah. if Google did not own them, they probably would not be around. Yeah, they would probably be under. That is that is very true because um, most of you might know that VidMe went under. I'm just going to assume that most of you, because I, I from what Joseph was telling me, a good majority of VidMe followers followed him on YouTube. Yeah. So with VidMe going under and kind of shedding some light, not necessarily numerical data, but just shedding some light on like the overall cost and all that. It, it, it is one of those, like what Joseph said, YouTube's in a tough position because their highest, one of their highest earning YouTubers is stuck in a really bad conundrum where, personally, I don't think he's sorry at all. I don't even think he cares. I just think he's only doing what he's doing to just kind of curb the curb the bad PR that's coming his way. Yeah. I, I don't know how else I want to word that. Because I'm really hoping that he does change in his videos because like with that type of audience, he could like reach a lot of people and hit a lot of like important issues if he wanted to actually like tackle them. He is a major influencer and honestly, if he did try and do good things with his videos, I'd, I think Joseph would be correct that um, stuff would change, but it's just one of those things right now He's making too much money. I mean, I just just appointed me to a good podcast from uh, H3 that... Yep, I highly recommend checking it out, and I'll leave a link below for that, too. It, that was a good podcast I recommended, too. But um, it, Joseph pointed that out to me, and just kind of their... Even their business model practicing, how they're marketing to kids is just kind of despicable as yeah, well. Because that video came out before this big Logan Paul controversy, too. Which Yeah, the, that's the... They hit it right on the nail. With yeah, that. they... They were, they kind of were ahead of the curb, and I was kind of hoping with this video we would be ahead of the curb too before the YouTube response. But we're uh, what two days late? Yeah. And we planned on doing this two days ago, so we probably would have been right there at the nail, but <laughs> just time couldn't line up. So yeah, one of those sad things. But uh, without further ado, let's kind of get to some of the ethos that we want to talk about. Or yeah, I didn't really get to go through them, so I'm kind of curious what you kind of had up and everything. Yeah, I just I wrote up. What I think is to be pretty simple and 
kind of just standard values of ethics that any creator, uh, content creator should have. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're big, small, or what not, it's just, I just believe everyone, everyone should have this, and I also kind of believe everyone should know this. Maybe that's because I read a lot of philosophy books, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm a little bit more in tune and I was able to come up with this, but like the first one I have here is, there should be there shouldn't be any benefiting from public disasters in either fame or money that that should just be a given right there and then that kind of ties into you know if you do make money or fame off of the public disaster the only way that it's really okay is if you give that money to the victims or if you use that fame to raise awareness like with the Casey Nestec uh, Casey Neistat yeah, yeah. nice Neistec I I'm new to him I did see him way on like with the Vegas shooting that's what I had in mind when I was writing that up like he was demonetized right away and YouTube claimed that uh, they don't allow people to make money off of off of tragedies yet what was that one that was kind of going around that YouTube didn't really do anything yet? They were making money off practically the same thing, but because yeah, it was one of the talk show hosts also had a uh, similar video out as Kais was Casey it Jimmy Neistat. Kendall or yeah, something I think it was like my friend Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, Kimmel, something like that, but because they didn't demonetize his, but they demonetized Casey Neistat. Yeah, and it's just like it just kind of is like youtube what are you doing you know that that was also during the ad bot apocalypse yeah ad apocalypse well they're kind of calling this new thing like apocalypse 2.0 i i can believe it because this is really bad this is i if i was an investor and i saw this controversy right here i would not want to invest i let's just say that and if i was someone who had ad money and i want to give to youtube i sadly wouldn't give it to no more to them because it's well, like, that's see, that's kind of like the problem, though, with like the ad things, because like you see these types of controversies on the news, and they're making money. That is true. Because like, oh, natural disaster. Now here's a Coca-Cola commercial. Drink Coke. And it prevents disasters. Yeah, it's Coca-Cola. Kind of that controversy of like, <laughs> because you, like if you're a new, like especially like Philip DeFranco, he's a new kind of like covers these stories, like, yeah. and he monetizes when he can, and then he also has his DeFranco elite, but. There's kind of has to be a line where how you're covering it and everything and kind of like being respectful when doing it. Yeah, that's and that actually kind of leads into um, the next one I have. It's whenever you are encountering public disasters as such and you want to cover it, either, you know, by bringing awareness or raising money, you should hold, uphold them. You should hold the utmost respect for whatever is happening, like with the whole entire Logan Paul or yeah, Logan Paul, not Jake Paul. Yeah. We were talking about Jake Paul before him. But with Logan Paul going to the suicide forest, he should have went in there with the utmost respect because it is so well known for people killing themselves. Like, if I went into that forest with a camera, and, you know, I might do it to raise awareness one day, but right now I'm too small and I, I'm too close to home. But, like, if I did that, the utmost respect would have been there. And if anything, I probably would have taken a step further to learn a Shinto prayer so I could at least be somewhat courteous to these people because i mean that's a big problem in japan yeah the whole entire all that because i guess their suicide rate i'm not sure the numbers but it is really high in it, that country it is very high because that country places a lot of emphasis on work 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 being the best and when people don't think like they're the best and their whole entire life's value is how well they perform or how much money they bring their company or you know the even the position in the company they hold that that can take a toll on people that can yeah and like i've seen like other people go into that forest exploring uh, the exploring crew i think uh, exploring with josh and them okay. they went into the forest they were really respectful they were just kind of documenting what they saw in the forest because like he likes going to abandoned places and different places just to get like the history of it and everything so it's more educational than anything and they were respectful like of course they didn't find the dead body but i think they probably would have just cut the cameras. They probably would have that, or if they did keep filling, they would have more than likely cut it out. Yeah, because like exploring with Josh, like has shown dead bodies in like different cultures and everything. But it was like from an educational standpoint, he was very respectful of that culture. It's just like like we were talking about, like the respect of it all. Mm -hmm. So going forward, like as a community, we have to think about that. That is something as a community we got to think about, and then. Another thing is if you know someone if you are caught benefiting from a public controversy 
or a disaster, you should issue an immediate and genuine apology. You shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm sorry, or I'm going to take time to reflect and not really mean it, and you know, you don't learn anything from it, because well, then why issue that apology in the first place? That just, you could use that energy on f fulfilling your pathetic life even further. Yeah. And which kind of ties into the next, um, like the next set of values that I have is that if you cannot, issue, you know, if you can't genuinely say you're sorry for whatever you did, I mean, for whatever you, you did, not dead, sorry, uh, just refrain from speaking upon the issue and just just kind of remove yourself from the controversy like because I was talking to Joe you know there's no such thing as bad public relations like the, you can think there's bad public relations but if people are talking about you like with this whole entire Logan Paul situation people are still talking about him Yep. and it's sad that you know he's gonna benefit from this and that's all it is it's all that's all it's doing to him it's just benefiting him one of the things that personally I think to like counter a situation like that especially when something bad happens is to silently not silently speak about it where you don't acknowledge all these videos about Logan Paul because that's just I mean you shouldn't um, make all these videos about what he did because that just that just furthers his machine and I mean it will kind of help you because you're talking about a important issue and you'll get people who agree with you to come to your videos but at the same time it's just like I, I don't know that's how I see it just yeah. it furthers them because like it's kind of like a really hard situation because when you see something bad happening you want to like react to it you do you don't want to see this evil getting away with whatever they're doing that is very true like it's like the whole entire age-old conundrum um if you see a train about to wreck you don't look away you keep watching yeah which is sad but by nature and I think this is my next part right here. Yeah, it's um, even if you like, let's say the person who uploaded it doesn't disagree, doesn't agree with why people are angry at it, they should at least try and defend their point. At least make people see what they're seeing. Because I mean, no one's, everyone has a reason why they do it. No one's invalid. Everyone just wants to be appreciated and accepted for who they are and all we can do at that point instead of criticizing the work we can actually try and learn like why did you upload that because by law people are irrational unpredictable and entirely emotional we believe we make rational decisions but I can guarantee you you're, over 90% of the stuff you do is not going to be rational yeah. with us making a video like this this was a rational decision though but like let's say going out to eat that's not rational that's just like you know, I'm not really feeling like burgers, but I'm feeling pizza. That's an emotion. You're hungry. You're hungry for pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's just... Well, and like, if you're like questioning yourself on like, put, should I put up, like if your footage is kind of questionable and you're not sure, like something I learned in like an ethics, more on like ethics class at college was like, make up like a potter's box. Okay. So like you write down like the idea or what your thing's about. Then you go over like, uh, I don't remember like exactly how you set it up. I should have looked it up beforehand, but like you look up like the ethics of like other people like philosophers and different things to see kind of like what their point of view would be on and like Just like different things like that and then try to come to a conclusion from the different information um, I pulled it up right here and it yeah, like de uh, You do a definition like you define what it is like all the effects and issues brought up from maybe like your video you've made the values so like is it going to be professional your moral behind it different things is it socio-cultural so i guess yeah. is it part of the cultural norm is what it's trying to say there yeah then yeah. you get to the principles so like i said ethical philosophies or different modes like the golden rule and different things like that you're gonna have to refresh me what's the golden rule again um well um coming back to which philosopher put it might bring that up. Yeah, that might be uh, something to have. A golden rule. Because I don't want to like mess up the definition, but a basic principle that should be followed to ensure success in general or in particular activity. Also, kind of pretty much what I was describing yeah. with this whole entire thing. Okay, that makes sense. All right, and then the last one is just loyalties. So who's the who's the decision maker that has loyalties or allegiance to? Because like you're thinking of your fan base, like. 
bringing up a dead body to like teenagers and young like younger people you should really be thinking about that you should because that's like your audience and then like to youtube because that's a platform you're putting on is that appropriate like content and no i mean i guess he's also thinking loyalties to himself though and like that's his true and just sells. how to brand himself <laughs> even better and i mean his loyalties were pretty clear in that video i mean he had what was it like the first couple hours or something the video was uncontested yeah like his whole entire fan base pretty got, much agreed with it yep got up to like six hundred thousand likes i think there might have been like seventy five thousand dislikes but compared to those numbers yeah that's that's a very limited um very small amount of people in his fan base that disliked it to begin with so and how i see it also is if you're going to upload something to youtube you can't just think about your fan base you gotta think about your future fan base yeah and like the community of like other youtubers yeah, and the community how are you affecting them by if youtube like decides to get stricter and de demonetize more videos like he might be making millions but like everyone else who's trying to be part of this uh platform that he helped grow it can't be a part of it no more because now their videos are demonetized because they are bringing awareness to an issue and the ad bot or whatever you know however they do it is like oh nope we're check marking that and it's just it's it's just bad overall for the community health in general i believe that was something i kind of actually had written down that is just yeah, I kind of have a little excerpt here. you mind if I read it? Or... Yeah, go ahead. All right, so pretty much what I wrote here is the reason we need to uphold a set of ethics as it is just morally correct course to do. When a site slash place becomes morally incomprehensible, as history has pointed out, it is subjugated to extreme scrutiny, which we're, I mean, we're facing right now with, we're not facing it right now, but definitely what YouTube has said in their response that they're going to take more stringent measures to make sure something like this doesn't happen and i mean we can all agree that's not good and, and i if you notice like in their apology too like they like say that the video is wrong and everything but they do not bring up logan paul in any way or form in that no, response they, they were intentionally ambiguous about their response they're just like we're sorry we're going to do better and we thought we did what we could at the time that was good enough for us as being the owners of this platform yeah and they were like talking about like possibly punishing him more which yeah. i don't really know like they How? could demonetize his videos i guess or they could like not make his youtube red movie because there's a sequel to the one he already made i mean it, but that also hurts them so i don't know yeah i had yeah, well let's just say if they did demonetize him which i'm Personally, I kind of think that's a, cr a correct course of action. It's not really going to harm him overall because he does have his own uh, merchandise line yeah. that his fans will still buy from. Because YouTube and, isn't his only source of income. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the problem. YouTube's not his only source of income. What I can think of, though, is something I just thought of it. If they do want to try and further the consequences, they can try and get him in a legal issue because he did break their terms and conditions. I, I would say a good step would be to cancel that movie. I mean, yes, it might hurt YouTube, but at the same time, YouTube could use that money that they kind of get back from that deal. Yeah. And they're not going to get it all back, but they could use the some of the money they're getting back from that canceling that deal. Is They could use it to actually kind of help push smaller creators, but let's be honest, YouTube's not going to do that. Well, because, like, there's so many smaller creators, and they're not... Oh, there's so many. And, like, smaller creators don't make YouTube money. Like, they don't. We, we go on there, we put our content, but we're also watching bigger YouTubers' content. Yeah, but... And that's where they're getting money, is from that app revenue. If anything, honestly, how I think of smaller content creators, and, I mean, you gotta remember, I'm one of you, I'm one of us, is... And <laughs> we're both one of... Yeah. We're both small. We're pretty much the parasites of the of the system we just we drain resources by keeping those servers up by up using up their space that they could use for bigger people who are more successful and famous uh by tech support by a bunch of stuff we're we're a drain essentially and with millions and millions possibly billions of people uploading to youtube that drain is quite intensive don't I mean, they have Google behind them, so that's very good support right there. Is yeah. they have Google's resources and they can afford the loss yeah, at the can, moment. They at can least. afford the loss, but because um, there mean, is a value having so many people pulled into one place like that. There is. It's a. It's. It's a just pool. monetizing it. Yeah. Because of like the ads, like they're using YouTube Red, and I think it is like pulling in decent money, but I don't know. It seems like. 
because I'm like on their free trial right now. Mm -hmm. It seems like most of their content is geared toward younger people because like their parents are paying for that subscription. I, well, now that we're on the younger people, I'm glad that kind of brought it up. Um, I mean, there, what about all those videos for direct? I mean, it looks like it's for the younger people, but then it turns out to be like Spider-Man having sex with Elsa from yeah, Frozen. I wanted know? to bring that up too. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad he brought up the younger people because, I mean, that's another thing that's going on with YouTube. It's just like, who knows, maybe YouTube, what what they can do in the future, if they want to be really stringent about everything that's uploaded, maybe they're going to make it in the future where YouTube's no longer free. That, like, could be a course, like, I'm... It's, I think that's where they were trying with this YouTube Red to see how many people would come aboard on the paying subscription. That's why I kind of liked VidMe. Like, they were making a little bit of revenue by, you could, like, tip people and different mm -hmm. things. I think they just need to come up with more ways to get that type of revenue. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, we're just speculating at this point. We can't predict the future or anything, but... I mean, those are just things I'm thinking of that, personally, would make sense, and I would... I wouldn't necessarily implement them, but I would definitely have it on the table as options of stuff that can happen. Yeah, because like trying to just think of ways for them to make money, mm -hmm. they make ads or they get ads and stuff, which they're having trouble with, uh, yes. which I think this is like a company's fault in a way, like the companies because there's value in getting these core demographics because like yeah. the YouTuber knows their analytics, they know who they're hitting. So like for products to be brought in like that, I think is a good way to advertise, but better than even TV, I would say, because you're, most people either mute the TV when the ads go on, like with an ad popping up on YouTube, you're kind of just stuck watching it. Especially now that they uh, bought out Adblocker Plus and you can <laughs> use ad blocks on YouTube to yeah. continue watching your content. If you got YouTube Red though, you don't, you're... You don't have any ads, but yeah. what is it, like 25 bucks a month or something I think like it's that? only like 10. 10 bucks a month? So it's not like terrible. I, mean, I think it's 10 or 15, but... At that point, they're just trying to compete with Hulu and Netflix then. And I I'm, I don't think they're at that content yet where they can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another thing I was going to mention. Like, because I, I follow a YouTuber. I mean, Matt Pat. Everyone knows oh, Matt yeah. Pat. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Matt Pat's pretty big and Matt Pat's well-respected. But, like, he, he did a couple episodes on YouTube Red. And, I mean, I got a free subscription back in the day just to watch MatPat, but once MatPat was done, I didn't bother using my red no more. Yeah. It was nice that I had no ads on any of my videos that I was watching for all the other YouTubers, but it's just... Well, and see, the thing is, they are bringing in, like, bigger celebrities into this YouTube red, not just, like, the YouTube celebrities. Like who? Um, well, they're gonna have a new Karate Kid oh, show, and they're shoot. bringing back the original Daniel and, uh, all right. the guy he fought in the first film. I can't think of his name. But, and then... I think they're also bringing in other celebrities that do their own shows. Well, which kind of is leading towards because like YouTube being like it could be anybody who can like make it big off this too. Yeah. We're bringing in celebrities so we can bring in money and advertisers. And that's a good way to bring in money is to bring in celebrities. I mean, money follows the celebrities. Yeah. And it's just I don't know, it's just the whole entire situation is kind of it's just a one bad thing and uh, the main that's kind of the main reason why YouTube's been silent on the whole entire thing is because I mean Logan Paul makes the money yeah like the, with the whole vine invasion yeah. Logan Paul Jake Paul I'm not sure who else came from that but those two seem to be the biggest at the moment uh, there's this one person I can't think of her name but she makes some really funny vines and she came over to YouTube once the Vine app closed and she's grown successfully yeah. on YouTube like majorly successfully but I, I just I wish I knew her name so I could say it mm -hmm. but I only reason I know that she was a Viner is because of podcasts <laughs> oh, okay podcasts are always great yeah but um it's just and I think going back to like small creators the best advice I would give also being a small creator is just be like the pioneers of the original YouTube go into it because you're passionate about it not to make money because I, it's not there anymore. I totally agree. You have, if you want to be in YouTube, you have to be passionate about it. When I was younger, and I'm going to admit to these mistakes, I went into YouTube thinking I was passionate about it, but I was really going in for the money. So when I, and when I was younger, I was also getting views, but you know how you are when you're younger, people around your age are younger, you play 
certain games that a younger generation plays and yeah. you get people to watch you, but then you just realize you're not making any money. You're like, well, why do I keep doing this? And that's a ma major problem. You, if you go into YouTube, definitely go into it just for a passion. Like how I'm approaching this new approach to YouTube is it's just going to be pretty much a historical archive for me of, yeah. of just videos, games I play, just kind of life in general, because that's how I'm approaching this YouTube channel. Just anything and everything going because like I, I wanted to make mine for like self-growth make myself a better person and like traveling you get experience this from that so even if i don't make any money i'll have these great memories that I go off of yeah and uh guess what provided that youtube in which is kind of a weird way to think about it because i mean you would think without yeah. youtube you would go off and you would still try and achieve it but it's just that catalyst to really push people in that direction yeah you get inspiration yeah. and like this is something else I wanted to bring up. It is so much easier to be controversial on YouTube than to try to be inspirational. It is extremely easy. I why why do you think that is? I, it's really I don't people love controversy. They like do. going back to even like reality TV, that gets so much views compared to like some quality shows. And all reality TV is is just pretty much controversy that is either staged or quote staged. They'll have like a certain like okay you're here this day just act now because i've I, that was one thing i actually learned about reality tv is i used to think all of it was scripted but a lot of it's not it's just here's a setting place and improv yeah because like you'll see if you put these people in like a situation something's bound to happen yep and when i learned that i was actually really intrigued and i kind of gained a little bit more respect for reality tv not enough to justify watching well, it <laughs> if you think about reality tv is like almost a precursor to youtube it I, is because like it's like kind of getting to the real point like it, some of it was scripted and some of it's like just put these people in a place but it was like recording their lives kind of constantly yeah, yeah i mean you're giving them updates <clears throat> and everything like i think youtubers took it to like a new level but with their whole entire cat memes and everything <laughs> else like that was like the cat invasion right there <laughs> i'm still thinking when you said inspiration the, ins the cat hanging on the tree <laughs> hang in there and all yeah. that because like because like i watch like a lot of travel youtubers they've gotten like the big ones are like in the millions of subscribers but mm -hmm. nothing like jake paul and like with hit or Logan Paul, 15 million. Yeah, well, I think Jake Paul has like around 12 million. Respectively, we, we don't watch these people, so these numbers yeah. are, these numbers may be off, but like with me, I'm I'm more into the gaming scene. I love to either just kind of see what new games are coming out, you know, what games look fun. I've been watching Splattercat re again recently, and he has like 1 million subscribers somewhere around there. Yeah. Boogie, I mean, he's been around for ages, man. I remember Boogie <laughs> when he was, well, Francis. Francis, yeah, his Francis the, videos. Francis was hilarious, but now Boogie, he has what, like 4 million, something like yeah, that? Yeah, he's really, like, big in that community, yeah. but... And he's very active outside of YouTube, too, but... Uh, I mean, I don't watch him anymore, but it's just like some of those things where it's just... Yeah, I don't watch him regularly, but I keep going back to like just his talking about like certain issues and yeah. it's really interesting. I've He has a good point of view. I mostly follow him on Twitter and that's how I get my in, my stuff from Boogie is all of his like... He's he's very intelligent, I will say that. Oh, yeah. The dude has a understanding of a lot of stuff in which I appreciate Yeah. a lot. But yeah, that's just, I mean... Those are just some places we're coming from is travel, gaming, and then, I mean, that doesn't even encompass like the whole entire YouTube, yet this whole entire controversy affects us all. Yeah. I mean, it affects people who are doing makeup videos, it affects people doing editing tutorial videos, it affects people doing music, believe it or not, because, I mean, if, you, let's say YouTube steps up a bot that has, um, a better listening al algorithm or what, however it works. I mean, I'm just barely learning this stuff. So one day I'll, I'll know what I'm talking about. But for right now, I'm just going to bullshit it. But <laughs> uh, let's just say, you know, uh, you have a riff that sounds similar to Sweet Child of Mine. I mean, now YouTube's going to be like, hey, maybe they copied this and they stole it. So demonetize. Well, and like for the educational channels, I think this hits them like so hard because there's a channel called Sexplanations, which is a sexual like education channel. And like most of their titles and different things are pretty explicit. It sounds yeah. like. So, yeah, see right there. It, I think it affects out of everyone, really. It affects the educational people the most. 
because they're not doing it to raise controversy or anything. What no. they're doing is they're actually doing it to raise awareness of the situation and to educate people about it. But uh, other than that... Like, and I'm just curious how YouTube is going to go forward with this because I'm, they have to do something, but what... What can they do? Yeah, they're stuck in a really hard place. They are... I'll give them that. They're in a position I would never want to be in if I owned a business. Well, because like, because like, there's other big content creators are that are like trying to condemn this Logan Paul thing. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to make them happy, but yeah. you're, Logan Paul made him so much money and is making him money. And they feel like they owe him something. So they're trying to, they're trying to maintain that he stays on board. And this is like his first like big I think big controversy, so... Yeah, I mean, I've seen a list of his other stuff, but it was kind of smaller and minute, but, like, this is his actual, like, making a wave controversy. Because, like, with PewDiePie, like, anytime, like, him with a controversy, like, it was, like, on news outlets, it, like, spread really fast. Yeah, PewDiePie's the biggest in the gaming place. Uh, well, like, he's the biggest in YouTube. Period? For subs, at least, because oh, okay. he has, like, over 50 million subs. And no one comes close to that, I don't think. Jiminy Crickets, man. Like, his, I think his videos average like a few million per, like, video, but still having that many subs. It was kind of surprising how fast, like, YouTube condemned him. Like, so his stuff was bad, but... I mean, nothing nearly as bad as what Logan Paul... Did. I mean, okay, maybe it's subjective and it is nearly as bad, but... Yeah. To me, personally, not as bad as what Logan Paul did. Yeah, because there was an actual person involved and, with that. Yeah. Like, and you can't get any more than that. Like, a person's a person. I personally believe in that we're all energy, and that person will come back eventually. But that's it. His current ride's over. But other than that, I mean, I'm pretty much tuckered out on this situation. What about you? Yeah, I'm not sure. There's really much to add at the moment. It'll be interesting seeing the updates that come from it, though. Definitely interesting. It will definitely be interesting, and I. I I'll just say, I'm really hoping that Logan Paul kind of learned something. Yeah, that's like the biggest thing that could come from this is he learned from this issue. I know like something that kind of came good from it was a lot of people donated money to like these suicide prevention programs mm -hmm. and that raised some awareness for them. So I'm hoping that helps some people at least. Uh, you know what? I'm hoping that helps people too. And I hate to say that a bad situation brought that, but I'm glad it still happened nonetheless that yeah. people are giving money to uh, to organizations that need the awareness to be raised. And, like, in the future, he can, like, raise these uh, issues. Yeah. Like, th he, I, there's a lot of topics I think he should talk about, especially to those younger audiences, like bullying. Yeah, I mean... And, like, if he wanted to bring up, like, suicide again, like, in an educational setting on, like, how people can get help, I think he really should do a video like that i would say he would he should wait if he did something like that especially with this recent this controversy yeah he should let everything simmer down before he even tries to do that i would say at least a mandatory one year wait period even then you will have, still have those most extreme yeah those most extreme how what's his name paul logan what's the dad's <laughs> name but yeah. those haters hating <laughs> yeah that was interesting that was very interesting but otherwise um uh, i think we're gonna sign yeah. out here um i'll try to link some uh some things down in the description i believe you're gonna link me down in the description if you want to check out my work i'm um, fair warning i'm mostly gaming and just random talking so hey right my channel just kind of flows Okay. With however I'm feeling. But uh, Shatterframe Gaming here. I'm signing off. And I hope you guys have a nice day, night, week. Whatever and it is. I, please uh, join the conversation in the comments. We'd love to hear what you guys think about this. I would definitely love to hear what you guys think about this. And I'm one of those people, I don't care what you say. I just, I want to know where you come from. So if you have something good to say, great. I'd love to know where you're coming from. I can probably already guess. You have something bad to say? Even better, because I want to know what brought you there. Yeah, and like I even like hearing from like fans of like Logan yeah. Paul, Jake Paul, like what do you, what are you guys thinking? Like, because you guys like are looking up to him, yeah. and like he has done this, he made a mistake. Where does this kind of leave you with him? Do you still enjoy his content? Are you now more lenient? I mean, more wary of what he's doing, or just let us know. Would love to hear from you. Okay, signing out. All right, peace.